around Dodge City and to the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. everything, Chester? Well, there might be more later when they finish sorting the mail. Hey, where's that telegram? Oh, what telegram? I thought I'd put it right on top. Let me take a look. Oh, yes. Here it is. Might be important. Oh, we'll soon see. Well, it's from Bill Hickok. Up in Abilene? Yeah. Uh, what'd you say, Mr. Dillon? Teeters and Gridler headed for Dodge. Keep them there, but don't arrest them until I get there with murder witness. Or I'll write Washington all I know about you. Signed, Hickok. Oh, then Mr. Hickok's coming here, huh? Well, that's what he says. Well, how do you recognize those two men, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I expect I'll recognize them, all right. Oh, you know them. Yeah, we've met. Teeters and Gridler are gunmen, Chester. The kind who kill as easy as most men shake hands. Just about as often. Too bad you can't just put him in jail. Yeah. Well, we'll start meeting the trains. There's one in at noon, sir. Good. Then we'll meet it. What will we do if they are on this train, Mr. Dillon? Nothing, Chester. I'll find them later and talk to them, but not in a crowd like this. Yes, sir. You know, every time I see a train, I am just overpowered with the urge to travel. Oh? Where to? Anywhere. Anywhere but Kansas. <laughs> well, I don't think you'd like it back east any better. Why not? You just have the urge to come out west again. <laughs> I know you're kind. Mm, I suppose you're right, sir. But still, it'd be good to walk down a street that wasn't all heat and dust and that wasn't crowded with a lot of grimy men looking for trouble. And I wouldn't mind seeing some women, married women, with kids and parasols and Wait bottles. a minute, Chester. There they are. Where? They just got off the end car. Those two headed for the depot there. One of them's tall? Yeah. That's Teeter's. And the black hat. The other's Gridler. I'll just step around the corner here and see which way they head. Yes, sir. There they are. Yeah. Looks like they're going to the Dodge house. Now let's follow them. Yep, that's where they're going, all right. Yeah, let's wait here. I'll let them get a room, and then I'll go talk to them. But if you can't arrest them... Then I'll just try to make them feel welcome to stay in Dodge. When do you think Mr. Hickok will get here? Oh, uh, be a couple of days anyway, Chester. Uh, look, right now I want you to go back to the depot and ask the ticket agent to let me know if Teeters and Gridler start to leave any time. You can describe them to him. All right, sir. And then go to the stage office. Yes, sir. And go to all the stables, too. If they rent or buy any horses, I want to know about it right away. I'll tell everybody. Also, tell them to keep quiet about it. I'll uh, be back at the office later, huh? All right, sir. What can I do for you, Marshal? 
Two men came in here just a minute ago. One of them was tall, black hat. Well? Well, what, Marshal? You were here. Did you see them? Those were gunmen. I could tell. Now, the tall one's Teeters and the other one's Griddler. Those are the names they gave you? Yes, but there'll be trouble if you try to arrest them here, Marshal. Can't you wait until they're outside in the street someplace? No. Now, what if they're after you? I've got nothing to do with men like that, Marshal. There's no reason in the world that they... Now, just take it easy. They never heard of you, and I'm not going to arrest them. But since you're a good, helpful citizen, maybe you can tell me what room they're in. Certainly, Marshal, certainly. Number 25. Up the stairs and turn to your left. Thank you very much. Put your gun away, Gridler. I just came for a little talk. Then make your talk, Marshal. No, I ain't polite, Gridler. Let him in. Watch him better inside, anyway. Hello, Teeters. What's on your mind, Marshal? I'm just trying to think. Last time I saw you men was in, uh... Let me see, was it Tascosa? Never mind all that, Marshal. Why are you here? No, I heard you were in town. I thought I'd drop by and say hello. News must travel pretty fast and dodge. We ain't been here 15 minutes, all told. Well, maybe he was expecting us, Griddle. I happened to be at the depot. I noticed you got off, so I followed you here. All right. But we're not wanted, Marshal. <laughs> Matter of fact, a judge up in Abilene just turned us loose. Wasn't no witness to that killing. While Bill tried to frame us, but didn't work. Well, that just goes to show the law's fair to everybody, doesn't it? Why'd you come here, Marshal? Just to let you know that I'm still the law in Dodge and that I don't want any trouble here. With men of your sort, I always like to mention that. We're not looking for trouble. Good, good. And you're welcome to stay here as long as you like. That's a funny thing to tell us. It's an open town, Teeters. Yeah, sure, Marshal, sure it is, yeah. And I'll treat you two just like anybody else. If you stay out of trouble, the town's yours. Anybody who starts trouble won't be us. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'll be going now, gentlemen. Oh, uh, there are some pretty sharp gamblers here. Don't let them take all of your money. Oh, don't you worry about us, Marsha. So long. <laughs> There was no way of figuring how long Teeters and Griddler might stay in Dodge. If they took a notion to do some gambling, it might be a week or two, or they might move on in an hour. That night, however, they were still in town, Buck and Farrow at the Oliver Ganza. Everything looked fine until Chester came into the office about 10 o'clock. They're fixing to leave, Mr. Dillon, first thing in the morning. Oh, how do you know? Jim Bunch at the stage office. He just told me they came in and paid their fare to Sharon Springs on the morning stage. Sharon Springs, huh? And then they're headed for Denver. Looks like it, sir. All right, Chester. Uh, go tell Jim that I'm going to be on that stage tomorrow, too. If he likes, I'll write shotgun for him. One of the boys can have a little time off. I'll tell him, sir. But are you going all the way to Denver? I'll follow him all the way to San Francisco if necessary. You can tell Hickok that when he shows up. Too bad he won't be here before they leave. And it'll be another day before he can get here. But that won't be too far behind us. Uh, stage leaves at 8, right? Yes, sir. I'll be there to see you off, Mr. Dillon. Fine. We'll meet at the Dodge House for breakfast, if you like. All right, sir. The stage looks like it's all ready to go, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. I don't see Teeters and Griddler, though. They're not inside, are they? I don't think so. No, they're not here yet. Just about 8 o'clock. They should be here. Well, it doesn't matter, Chester. If they've changed their minds, it's all to the good anyway. Want me to go ask Jim Bunch if he's heard from them, Mr. Dillon? Uh, no, no. Let's just wait here. 
Oh, say, I forgot to tell you. Jim said the regular shotgun messenger has to go up to Sharon Springs anyway, but to thank you just the same. No, good. Chester. Yes, sir? Look, up at the other end of the plaza there. Coming this way. Well, I declare. It's Sam. Yeah. Now what are they up to, I wonder? Well, they can't be taking the stage if they're horseback. No. Looks to me like they're fixed for a long ride, too. Sure does, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. You're up early, Marshal. Yeah. So are you, Teeters. It's cooler in the morning. Well, for traveling, it is. So long, Marshal. What's the matter? Did you lose all your money last night? Yeah. Next time, we'll follow your advice. So long. Will we go after him? Uh, Chester, you stay here and explain things to Wild Bill. I'll be on their trail. As soon as they're out of sight, I'll get my horse. You can tell Jim I won't be taking the stage. All right, sir. I'll leave as clear a trail for Hickok as I can. Yes, sir, I'll tell him. We will return to the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, young women are needed to enroll as student nurses and to take their places as graduate nurses in an ever-expanding field where opportunity unlimited awaits. Older women should seek careers as practical nurses where fine living and fine working conditions are in prospect. Ask at any hospital at the nurse's registry desk or at any qualified school of nursing. And now, the second act of Gunsmoke. I did my best to stay out of Teeter's and Griddler's sight. But if they had suspicions of being followed and were watching their back trail, they'd have known I was there, all right. The land was flat, and we frequently crossed great patches of powder-dried dirt that smoked the air with dust under the horses' feet. After an hour, they began to swing slowly north. And by noon, it was clear that for some reason they were riding in a great half-circle They'd left Dodge, headed west, and sure enough, just after sundown, they rode back into town from the east. I waited until dark, then came in. Put my horse up. The office was empty, so I walked up to Delmonico's, where I found Doc having supper. Oh, Matt! Oh, sit down, sit down, sit down. Oh, thank you, Doc. Oh, you look hungry enough to even eat this food. (laughs) Yeah, it's been a long time since breakfast, Doc. Yeah, a man ought to eat three meals regular, Matt. You'll get run down if you don't. <laughs> yeah, sure, Doc. Only sometimes you have to eat when you can. Oh, I told you have a hard day, Matt. Yeah, I've been riding, Doc. Riding around in circles. Oh, is that what the government pays you for? Oh, I'd like to have your job, Matt. <laughs> I wouldn't be too sure of that, Doc. It isn't always this easy. Well, yeah, I know, Matt. Just told me. What happened to you? Did you lose them? No, I didn't lose them. As a matter of fact, they're coming in here right now. Huh? What do you mean they're coming? Those two? Yeah. They're pretty hard-looking fellows. They are. Evening, Marshal. Oh, hello, Teeters. Griddler. Marshal. This is Dr. Adams, gentlemen. How are you? How are you, Doc? How are you? Well, what's on your mind? You are, Marshal. What? That was you trailing us all day, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Why? (laughs) I didn't want you to get lost. That's a lie. Then let's say that I didn't want you to get into any trouble. You're going to tell us what it's all about, Marshal? Well, you're not exactly the most reputable citizens in Kansas. I just wanted to have an eye on you, that's all. You sure do. Because it's like I told you, you keep out of trouble and you're welcome to stay here. Just remember one thing, Marshal. There's two of us. And next time you follow us, 
he might not come back. <laughs> well, taking chances like that's part of my job, Mr. Teeters. That's a poor job, then. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think so, too. Come on, Teeters, let's get out of here. Yeah. Well, they're not very polite, are they? No, but they're smart. Smart enough to figure something's wrong, anyway. Well, you think they might bolt, Matt? Yeah, it depends on how smart they really are, Doc. Right now, they're so curious, they might stay around just to see what it's all about. Oh, Mr. Dillon? Oh, hello, Chester. Hello, Pull up a chair. Mm -hmm. Pull up a chair, Chester. I won't have time. Hey, we better get right over to the depot. Oh, why? What's happened? Well, sir, I saw them right back into town. The first thing they did was go to the depot and ask about a train. Oh, were you there? No, sir. The agent came and told me, told me like he'd promised. The train goes at 7.30, doesn't it? Yes, sir. And it's just about that now. I've been looking everywhere for you. Uh -huh. Doc, if that waiter ever does come around, tell him to hold a steak for me, will you? I might just be back for it. Oh, yeah, sure, Matt. Yes, sir. And good luck. Yeah, thanks, Doc. Come on, Chester. Are you going to go on the train with him, Mr. Dillon? No. Hickok's sure to be here in the morning, Chester. If I can keep him off this train tonight, I doubt they'll try anything else till tomorrow. Yeah, but you can't arrest him. Yeah, I know. Well, then, I'll how, just how are you... face him off, Chester. So keep your head up. Yes, sir. Now, there they are. Come on. You come just to say goodbye, Marshal? Not exactly, Peters. Oh? You, uh... You can take the train tomorrow, if you like, but, uh... Not this one. Why tomorrow? Well, I've got orders to keep you in sight till then. Uh... Orders from who? It doesn't matter. But you have your choice. You can have the run of Dodge tonight, or you can spend it in jail. You know, you talk pretty loose for just one man, Marshal. Your friend there doesn't look like a gunman. Well, now, you can't always tell by looks, mister. I can. You said you didn't want trouble, Marshal, but you sure starting it. There won't be any trouble. You do what I tell you. And if we don't, I'll kill the first one of you that moves for that train. You can die that way, Marshal. Maybe. But you won't both get on that train. Gridler. You know me. You know I'll do it. We can still make it, Gridler. No. It's not worth it. We can go tomorrow. All right. Marshal. Tomorrow it'll be different. Yeah, sure, sure. Tomorrow it'll be different. <laughs> Chester and I met the noon train next day. But as I'd figured, Hickok didn't get off it. I questioned the man who rode the baggage car, and sure enough, Wild Bill and his witness had hidden out there the whole trip. As soon as the crowd left the depot, we walked down to the car, crawled under it, and pounded on the door on the other side. Who is it? It's Dillon, Bill. Open up. Oh, jump up, Matt. Come on, Chester. Oh, well, Matt, how are you? Oh, fine, Bill, fine. Oh, uh, this is Chester Prod. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Uh, Chester? Up. Sam, come over here. This is my witness, Sam Trimble. How are you, Mr. Trimble? Are you still here, Matt? Yeah, but we better move fast. Matt, that judge up at Abilene's crazy, but he's still the judge. And he says Trimble here has to identify Teeters and Gridler before I arrest him this time. But, Bill, they can't be tried twice for the same crime. I know that, Matt, but I'm after them for a second murder they did. I'd suggest we just go kill them, but I've been waiting a long time to see these two hung, and by glory, I'm going to do it. Yeah, you will, if you're lucky. Uh, tell me, Mr. Trimble, do these men know you on sight? Well, I'll tell you how it was, Marshal. I, I was in the stable where I worked. Over in Abilene, that is. And a fella come in for his horse, and I went to get it for him. I heard some shooting, and then two men ran right past me. 
I got a good look at him, all right. They, they just killed that fella, too. You mean you don't know Teeters and Gridler? I never heard of him, Matt. There's no pictures of him I know of, but he can identify him when he sees it. Yeah, sure, but what about them? Will they recognize you, Mr. Trimble? Gosh, I don't know, Marshal. I hope not. They'd kill me on sight, wouldn't they? I hadn't thought of that. Well, you just do what we tell you to and you'll come to no harm, Trimble. Dylan and I are a fair match for those two. If they start any trouble, we'll be on them so fast they'll die on their feet. Taking a terrible chance. I, I hadn't thought of that. Easy, Trimble, easy. An hour from now, we'll have them in jail with their teeth pulled. I sure hope so, but how are you going to do it? Just go find them, that's all. As soon as we get them locked up, I'll buy you the biggest steak you ever ate, Trimble. Come on, let's go. I took Hickok and Trimble over to the Texas Trail, where we decided we'd wait while Chester located Teeters and Gridler. Then we'd just walk in on them and get it over with fast. I introduced the two men to Kitty, and we ordered a couple of drinks for Trimble, who was getting jumpier by the minute. <laughs> What are you two heroes doing? Getting this poor man drunk enough to fight him? <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly, Miss Kitty. He just lacks faith in us, that's all. Ah. I wouldn't have come if I'd thought about it. I sure would. Look, Trimble. It isn't often a man has both mine and Matt Dillon's guns behind him. You're as safe as you'd be in church. I don't go to church. Uh, here, Mr. Trimble. Have another drink, huh? Uh, I, I will in a minute. I'm going out back first. <laughs> Whatever you're up to, it's making him mighty nervous. Yeah. Well, I'll admit he usually leads a quieter life. He'll brag big, though, once he's back in Avalon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me, Bill, do you plan to stay in Abilene long? Oh, I don't know, Matt. Charlie Utter keeps talking to me about Deadwood. Oh, it's as dusty up in Deadwood as it is in Kansas. Yeah, I know, Miss Kitty, but Charlie thinks some of that dust is made of gold. Ah. Hey, well, What's that? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. I'll go with you, man. All right, stay in here, everybody. It was Teeters and Gridler. I was just crossing the street and saw them run out of the alley there. All right, come on. There he is. Trimble. What happened, Trimble? They shot me. I was going to run away. And he got scared and ran right into him. Yeah, we shouldn't have let him alone at all. They said they saw me with you, Mr. Hickok. They said that that's all they needed to know. And they shot me. Chester, go get the doc. Hurry. Yes, sir. Tell me, Trimble. They were the men who killed that fellow in Abilene. You recognized them all right? No. No. I never saw these two before. It wasn't them. I... Well, what? I knew I shouldn't have come. I... I got killed for nothing. nothing. Trimble. Trimble. That's no use, Bill. Yeah. He got killed for nothing, all right. They must have figured he was a witness to some murder they did commit. Well, anyway, they'll hang for Trimble now. Let's find him before they get out of town, Matt. We'll find him even if they do. Hickok and I walked out of the alley and into the plaza... There were a couple of citizens who'd heard the shooting and had seen Teeters and Gridler run out of the alley. Told us that they'd gone into the Dodge house. And we followed. From the look on the clerk's face as we went past him and up the stairs, I knew that they were in their room. When we reached it, Bill stood on one side of the door and I on the other. Think they'll fight, man? Well, let's ask them. I told you that Paula was Peters. Well, we're trapped sure. Shut up, I said. And it got us to the street on the line. Open the door. 
Throw your guns out. There's no use trying to fight. There's no use in hanging neither, Marshal. You can just take us the best way you can. No. Our chance hanging. We got off once. He... Billy, you get away from that door. I've listened to you enough. I ain't facing Dillon and Hickok both now. Bring that! Hold your hands here, let go. Peters, you shouldn't have... Oh, oh, oh. Wait, Matt. Could be a trick. No, I don't think so, Bill. Look. On the floor there. Yeah, he's been hit all right. Sure, never expected this. Saved us doing it, maybe. Riddler lost his nerve, blast him. Shooting was too good for these two. I wanted to see him hung. Well, things don't always work out, Bill. Well, they sure don't. Not lately, anyway. Matt, I think I'll go up to Deadwood with Charlie Otter right soon, after all. Maybe I can find me a little peace and quiet. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John McIntyre, Lawrence Dabkin, John Daner, Joe Duvall, and Harry Bartell. Parley Bear is Chester, Georgia Ellis is Kitty, and Howard McNear is Doc. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Many of the war orphans of Korea have never known peace or plenty. Their lives have gone from bad to worse. Now their future is in our hands. Without help, they cannot live. We can send them food through CARE, the American Package Sending Relief Agency. Send your contribution to CARE's local office or to CARE New York or CARE Los Angeles. This is Roy Rowan. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>